Hey, everybody. I'm Sean Robinson. I'm Carson Grubaugh, and we're back for Matt's 35th birthday? 34th. But this is like his second birthday. Oh, I see. Yeah, he just aged a year uh, (laughs) in the past week. And uh, Matt (laughs) has brought... What what have you brought with you today, Matt? Uh, Cordo Maltese. So... So you are giving me the key. You're the only person I've ever heard say it out loud. So say it again to me, please. Cordo Maltese. I also don't okay. know if I'm pronouncing it right, but oh, okay. but I that's how I believe it's pronounced. That's how I would pronounce it. That's how I would. Yeah, that's how I'd say it. Yeah. And uh, this is by the globe trotting uh, Italian by origin artist Hugo Pratt. Mm-hmm. Um, did you guys know that he lived basically everywhere? Yeah, I mean, you can tell by reading uh, Cordo Maltese that he's lived, like, everywhere. Because it's... Yeah. This is okay. really, other than maybe one other Cordo Maltese, the only one I've read, because I found it at a second in Charles. I have the same mm-hmm. same one there that Matt has. I thought this was the first one because it was called Early Years, but I guess this is way later he went back. And yeah. you can tell by some of the artwork later... Uh, that he simplified his style. It's very much more Alex Raymondy type of vibes. It looks like yeah. when he started. Well, it's. Uh, I mean, yeah, he definitely changes a lot over the years. Right. Yeah. So, so the the early years is about the early years of these characters, but yeah. the actual art was produced much later, and it was also produced as as a four panel uh, newspaper strip. Whereas yeah. his his other stuff was all done for a large format comic, um, and so yeah, the, the art's fairly different. Uh, at having owned many books by him, but never read them other mm-hmm. than reading them in French, uh, this was an interesting uh, experience to look at it. Like, I I had never noticed. I, I so I always noticed the Milt uh, Kniff influence. I mean, that seems like that's the biggest, you know biggest visual influence on him yeah uh, obviously but i I, yeah. I had never noticed the hair gay influence uh before but like looking at it when you don't get to see the sort of same cinematic take i was really like it, it seemed like milk kniff doing a hair gay you know tin tin adventure or something it was a very interesting kind of visual combination with like uh, that clean line everywhere and then the yep. big black like chunked in on top of it I exactly. love that chunked in black look that he does. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the mega kniff. And he's even got the like Steve Canyon, like, what are those big blotchy, big black blotches on your coat, Steve? Uh, kind <laughs> yeah. of thing. Which but is, then you strip that out and it is just a clean line, line Claire type of drawing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He 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 goes way cartoonier than I remember too. Um in this particular uh, volume, especially like some of the characters like uh, Rasputin, um, who, who who like seems like a little bit more of a caricature than I recall from reading his stuff in French, you know, just having well, random. I, I think this volume is, you know, way more car- cartoon, like the Rasputin's far more cartoony than, than, he, than he is later on. He's got the large nose, you know, mm-hmm. uh, he, his, his exaggeration is, is so heavy that you don't necessarily think that you could see him from every angle, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you can like only see nose. him from that three quarters, that's three quarters of profile. Right. Of <laughs> exactly. Those are like your, and he, he's got a few where he's straight on too, but like right mo- for the most part, you can't really imagine that you could just do like a full rotation of him, you know, like yeah. he's more like the Bruce, Bruce, Tim, like, like several generations of influence by like super super stylized where it sort of starts closing off as like a three-dimensional object you know when you were um, reading them in french were were you finding color editions or were they all black and white uh i had i had a, a i have some magazines that have them in color but then the collections i had were in black and white yeah so okay. you've got both there right now huh yeah so this one i picked up in greece every time i travel i always try to find like a because like Cordo Maltese has been translated enough and is in, available so widely at this, like at least in Europe, that um, I can pretty reliably find one, and so I like, I like grabbing them. But these, this is how they were they were published in Greece in these little like hmm. magazine ones. the The Italian one I have is 
uh, more like a book, but they have they do color and black and white over there. Um, I actually like it with the color better, honestly. I think it reads really nicely with the color, and the color yeah. is done really well. There's this this scene here where it lets his weird chunky marks integrate a little better. When it's in black and white, it's like just a rectangle slapped on something, and sometimes that works, and sometimes it's a little like okay. Well, but I love there, how like this scene reads beautifully as nighttime now. Yeah, but the that like little blue color. Um, and this was anyway. this was published in three panel or four panel strips. It it seems so continuous to me. I can't. the The thing that really stood out to me about reading this story was that it felt like a movie done with a single camera shot. Mm -hmm. And that's strange to me to think that that was broken up into a daily sequence. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if the units are three or six, um, but, uh, and, and I don't even know, yeah, but it was a newspaper, newspaper strip. Um, wow. And uh, yeah, you could see a little bit of the redundancy. It's a little bit of like, mild amounts of dialogue where the characters are restating what's been happening um, yeah. the main character jack london <laughs> is the <laughs> writer jack london which is yeah. like a bold move yeah. uh, <laughs> in living memory of hugo pratt you know so pratt was yeah. working on this like he started the he uh you know started this series in 67 right so jack london i mean wasn't that long i mean it was his grave wasn't warm or anything but he wasn't that you know <laughs> He wasn't that dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you've got like Rasputin too, so there are some like historical. You think it's supposed to be Rasputin? Rasputin? I don't think it's supposed to be Rasputin. I don't Rasputin think so. Rasputin. I think it's no, just, he's just he's just using the name. Yeah. So uh, I, again, this is the only like one of two things I've read. So when you have other historical names, I assume so. I know that's like the ongoing bad guy, right? That's like Porto's arch nemesis, kind of. Kind of. Okay. I, this is like where they meet for the first time. Yeah. The color on that's beautiful though. This okay, so this is a panel and something that I wanted to ask about and I didn't know if, you know, you guys had any thoughts on this. So this panel and the boat specifically, but everything around it and the boat in here and here is rendered completely differently than anything else in the book. Even like yeah. this train, right, you know. So what's he doing? Like, oh, like the tightness of it. Yeah, yeah. Got... and then you see it again in these layouts too, for, for or the these the the abandoned strip in the back. Right, this boat in yeah. the foreground is is perfectly perfect, like sort of perfectly drawn and and very like. Well, it's like, the what's he the doing? The hair gay. He's tracing photo reference and okay. using a using a repetograph uh, for all the line work on that. Probably the same repetographs that he's using for the uh, panel borders or whatever. It almost uh, looks photocopied photo in. Too. Yeah, it almost looks photocopied in though, like because the blacks are all way darker, but there's kind of a graininess to it, like where it looks like mm -hmm. he copped that from somewhere else and just cut and pasted it. And then it's here again. I just right. I just noticed this because I, I you know, uh, there there are a few instances in other um volumes yeah. where in some panels the the like vehicle is rendered in his style and then on other panels the same exact vehicle will yeah. be rendered in this sort of you know photo real yeah. style the other one i had handy that i was flipping through yesterday has a bunch of photostatted trains they yeah. got like a master master drawing of a train that was done in a really controlled uh style and then there's a bunch of photo stats reducing that train and other panels and everything um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, whatever his production was, whether that's him doing it in a different mental mode or an assistant, um, that's definitely, there's definitely judicious use of uh, photo stats. I oh, the, I see why it looks one. photocopied. There you go. That's the one. Right? Like, yeah. Like, I, I yeah, just, I, I think it's on. It's a, I it's see a, why it looks photocopied, though, because he cut and pasted the, his own drawing from panel two on the first throw right. away page to panel four and blew it up yeah there again yeah. i mean yeah. it, it it you know it's obvious why he does it um yeah it's a, it's a cool look and it's not really that different from the milk caniff 
uh, you know, Carson and I have talked about this before. Like that was the reason that I flagged that as a Mobius, uh, Kniff as a Mobius influence. Mm-hmm. Uh, is is that combination? Despite the rendering being so radically different, is because you get that combination of somebody who is willing to cartoon in a fairly extreme way, but also is making reference to uh, life and is very very attentive to things like costumes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you never like get confused what Steve Canyon's job is because he's got his coat on all the time, right? Uh, <laughs> those dudes right there have like period accurate bayonets yeah uh, attached to their rifles right um it, it it seems like a sort of attention to detail that goes along with the fairly extreme cartooning and then the black thing you know the the judicious use of of anchored anchoring blacks but yeah it's it's very different to see it without the without the color um i i like the color i mean and the other thing that I, that we don't get in the idw editions that is present in almost all the other editions I've found is, which reinforces, and Carson and I were talking about this a little bit last night, where it's like, there is a, um, to me, the appeal of, of these stories and of the character and of the books is it's their travel logs in some ways. And it seems like in the front of all these other editions, there's a lot about the place and the history and the, the time period that he's talking about that, um, I think lends more towards that where like the appeal of it isn't necessarily the plot because some of the stories, the plots are sort of whatever, but, but I think it's really just like this, the way that he, he can sort of show a place um, and take you there in in, in some way. And I think the Um, color adds to that too, because like place has so much to do with lighting Mm-hmm. You know, like different places have their different sense of light and atmosphere. And so, like, like I said, I've only read a couple of his stories. And what we were talking about last night was I was saying, I don't know, his his writing has never appealed to me because it seems bureaucratic and procedural. Like it seems like people talking about political stuff, you know, just standing and talking about like a general planning thing or where are we going to mm-hmm. go or how are we going to like move a troop over here or explaining the political situation in a place and it just blah 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 to me and then the because i've only seen it in black and white i think some of that sense of i mean mean, those are some really nice drawings but the sense of place or at least maybe because i read the early years one and it's just in a battlefield Mm -hmm. you know it's just kind of it's just figures and and he never really moves the camera around much it's always I think that's probably another hair gay thing. It's it's all kind of like a play. Uh, yeah, you know. and and that's definitely different from uh, a departure from some of his other work, uh, where he pulls okay. back a lot more um, and will give you sort of the action uh, in a different kind of a different kind of way. I well, think I just prefer his earlier art too, where it looks like he's not stripped down to that clean line so persistently. Like some of the stuff maps flipping through looks looks nicer to me. Well, and I like these these N N the N B N editions. I think right. are are nicer and Those better good, yeah. better better printed and better done than the IDW ones. Um, so I, I just I don't the, the some of the IDW ones you have a really you have really bad like um, the lines are really jagged in some of them and there are a few where where even where they have um they have like 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 word balloons from from different panels are underneath the the like line art uh and it just looks like what like the production uh, like they scanned it and you can see it from like the other page they did that on the ninja turtles one that we looked at yeah not not to make an entire video complaining about how they're putting it put them out but uh yeah the the one idw volume that i have uh this issue that we're about to look at right here is just flagrantly obvious just holding it in my hand um you could see that there's a little like jaggedness to it and it's just because they didn't process the line art as line art and so uh they were probably supplied with slightly grayscale files um and when they they didn't scale them up and they didn't do anything and so that they're half toned by the printer this is like minor half toning over 
um, line art files uh, or low resolution files. One of the two. Hard to tell with that. And they printed it. on so, like really shiny paper too, which yeah, it, it, it looks nice for like the contrast of the lines. But when when the lines have that jaggediness to them, that extra contrast really makes it jump out. The shininess um, is what bothers me a lot. Here, if you look at this one, you can see there's like lettering underneath the line art here. <laughs> oh, oh man. Geez. Which, well, um, let's see. That stuff looks way more beautiful, though. That's more like when Alex Raymond is cutting loose or Al Williamson is cutting loose. Yeah, like well, this is earlier than. Stuff. Yeah, than... I, I think it's safe to say that this early years book, which is not early, uh, is is yeah. a, a step, several steps down in the in the art department. Um, no, I, it's definitely not where I would recommend someone to start reading it either. I, I thought that the uh, the story is fairly self assured, though, even though like you were saying Carson it feels more like a procedural because people are constantly reminding of you what, what you've experienced before uh, but you know as far as like dipping back in uh, you know it, it's weird that though it's only the black and white ones um, I don't know if you guys remember that the there was a, an edition of the first book that came out in color and it Hold was on. so horrible looking that people were really uh, you know really really shocked by it and it basically sunk the publisher uh, and, um, and the thing is, is that, uh, maybe they just kind of threw the baby out with the bathwater and the people didn't realize that it wasn't just complaints about the reproduction. It was like complaints about the, um, you know, it wasn't complaints about the color, but it was complaints about the reproduction. Uh, you know, this one was, was the color was done after it. So this particular volume was not published in color initially. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was maybe got wrapped into those complaints, but I would really love to see them all come out in color frankly the, the um, color is not the issue with this it's the issue right. is is that they hold on I'll just go grab the but, and it's funny because we're usually arguing for like how much we love black and white and <laughs> and some of the other ones matt is showing me i really like it in black and white but seeing them in color i don't know his, his something about his style works in color for me and if it is like matt's saying a travel log then i kind of want that like flavor of the world that comes with color i believe it's so his like, his widow or his ex his girlfriend who did the coloring of the volumes that he didn't do the coloring of initially so yeah the actual complaint is not it's that the, so this is the actual page and this is what right. oh shit the reformatting yeah oh so that they, ruins they, the composition Right. And it makes it very, it, it makes for, for it to be, it's a confusing read because like this panel is, is now it's like half of the, they've right. cropped it. Um, oh God. What and so the there's hell? a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of changes like that that are both unnecessary. Um, and um, like this panel now they changed into a whole full width panel. Right. But, but I also, though, I will say, though, I think that the translation is better in here than it is in here, in some cases. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, this was my first, this was the first one I read of it. Like, that's the first, first encounter I had. And, and I thought that the reading it, like sequentially reading it was a lot, was much more difficult than I thought it should be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah see, that the, the breaks up. were weird. And that, that's where, like, I continue to learn, like, basically since since starting to read Glamour Puss and reading Dave's original Alex Raymond material, I'm constantly relearning how many masters I've written off because of issues like that. Like, mm -hmm. I'd seen Alex Raymond before, but it was bad reproduction. I thought, ah, whatever, it's not that great. I've seen Hugo Pratt. I've tried to read Porto Maltese because everyone talks speaks so highly of it as being very literate versions of like an action adventure, more adult. And I just think, God, this shit is boring. I'm having trouble paying attention. Like it doesn't look that great. Um, the only thing that I came away with being impressed by was the like single camera type of storytelling where you're constantly swapping characters and then a character goes and does something else and then like cycles back into the loop and they're kind of passing off the focus of the story. Mm -hmm. I, I doubt he keeps that going in all of his his. Books. He doesn't usually do it like that. I mean, usually it's pretty focused on Cordo. Um, 
but I, I, I think read some of the other volumes. Like I really, this volume is really good. And I think that these, the N NBM editions are, are okay. some of the better ones to, to pick up if you can find well, them. I'm going to pick up Corto Maltese in Africa, the NBM. Uh, okay. Hopefully a books will help me out and uh, yeah. hopefully I can do that before we uh, publish video. <laughs> and uh, if you guys have recommendations for other uh, Corto Maltese we should read or other Hugo Pratt, um, you know, like I said, almost all of my experience is like flipping through, uh, you know, French and Italian, mm -hmm. you know, languages that I don't, <laughs> I can't fluently read. Um, and it was very intriguing to me to see sort of his uh, casual voice. I really liked Jack London as a character. Um, and uh, I thought that he was a really intriguing, um, you know, his sort of well let's see what happens kind of narration was a uh, was really fun um so so matt you've got a stack of something right here you've got yeah. a birthday present that you're giving to us <laughs> yeah i have a stack of pages um and some reproduction tests uh so this is the book that i'm working on uh, tell, tell us the title here the title is house on fire um it's going to be nice. about a hundred pages, I think. Uh, right. It's going to be coming out once I finish it. Uh huh. <laughs> it's almost done. It's almost done. Um, and you, uh, from your brushwork, would you say that you have gotten some Hugo Pratt influence? Yeah, in I mean, I I think, and also like I mean, um, all these. So I'm obviously preparing to do the tones. So I've put uh, vellum on top of all my pages at this point. Right. Um, I think that between, I, I, I would say that like one of the major, um, there is some, I, I would say that there's some Pratt, there's obviously some Pope who we also talked about on this channel. Um, Paul Pope. Yep. Not Pope Francis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pops up when you search for Pope, Paul Pope, you get Pope Francis a lot too. Um, but uh um, I also have been trying like storytelling wise to, to take in some of that manga -y pacing from from the lone wolf and stuff like that um, using a lot of these kind of like big you know the big 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 panels and then sort of breaking it down a lot later on so um, I'm really excited I'm I'm I think it's a I think it's a good book I I don't want to give too much away but um I'm just doing a see some of these pages to this vellum this was I I thought I was buying a, a thinner thinner <laughs> uh, vellum but this stuff actually ended up working out yeah so um better. this is this is going to be uh coming out through living wine yes uh, it is and uh, we, Matt and I have been talking about how to best get this uh, second color. Initially, we were talking about tone and stuff like that. And uh, we, we were discussing about how uh, the density of the color can kind of affect your, you know, how much you put on there um, mm -hmm. and uh, wanting to separate it out from the line work. Uh, so we hit on this combination of uh, tracing paper or vellum uh, on top of the original with a colored ink that's, a, you know, approximately the same density as as it'll be printed and you know with a pantone color yeah um, and obviously like i thought it was an, the, the bottle says orange but you're right. very red <laughs> uh, um, but you're just creating a value that you're then going to put as a as a second ink right it's going to be a spot yeah, color ink because it's going to be i think this is going to this is what the pages are going to hopefully look like when we're well they're going to look better because sean didn't master these pages yeah. So uh, I actually I'm I have um, faith that that the, the printed edition is going to look even better than the actual pages look just because <laughs> what Sean does with the, uh, the the sort of the production out and is just it's it's awesome. Well, you've got that you, that dry brush edge to a lot of the stuff. Um, yeah, and, uh, it, I think that that's something that like, you know, it doesn't that. really come across very often. Um, in print, but definitely can look fantastic. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about your book. I, I, I think that you've got a great concept for it. And, uh, you know, I think there's some similarity with the lone wolf and cub and having some striking visual images that sort of carry a lot of the story. 
Um, yeah, yeah like, so the ability to get that second that second color to have some value variations in it by having it separated out and stuff, but still having it like one color, like that could look really cool too. Because I'm looking at your actual ink drawing there and it has some of that quality to it. Yeah, I'm trying to have it. I, I mean, I'm hoping I'm, we'll have to figure that out, but I'm hoping that the um, that we'll get some of this variation in the print. Great. Um, it's because I'm trying to use that to to the page's advantage. But um, I'm just I'm chugging along here, and I'm I'm really excited. I'm I can't I I, uh, I am super happy to have you guys putting them out. So yeah, no, it's it's, it's um the stack is growing. It's almost done. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome it, like this is the most pages present. i think i've ever like drawn like 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 i mean I, i've already doubled my output from last year at least if not tripled it so that's awesome well super uh, exciting it, it's a it, it's it's an interesting experience to really produce a, at a speed right you start to find out things about yourself and the um you know pacing that you you do it it seems like that changes your you know your drawing i was intrigued to see some of your stuff in in process and see how you you know or sort of like we were talking about with the lone wolf and cub like you know you're sort of tightening up your penciling with those first few strokes and then refining from there i was just mad that he was like sending it to us for you know opinions and he was like I did this like in the last couple of days and it's like 70 pages <laughs> of like <laughs> pencils. Like, well, fuck you, Matt. And then like, okay, I'm going to go ink it now. And then like all of a sudden there's like 80 pages of inks. So what is it? What are you doing I, all I, of this? I've ended up, I've gotten busier with other, with other crap. So it slowed me down, but uh, yeah, no, I, I think I try to go quick because I feel like, and I think that's something that I, you get when looking at those one lone wolf and cub pages is that immediacy. I feel like adds something to it. Like, like it, it adds a, um, I don't know, it adds a quality to, to the art where you're, where you really, uh, especially as this book goes on, it's getting the tension supposed to ramp up. So I'm hoping that the, the speed with which I ink it hopefully like builds on that and, and makes it, you know, I think make, it makes you feel that like, this is a, I'm really happy with this page. This page came out nice. Yeah. So this will be a fun one for for to see how we handle this one because there's a lot of dry brush and splatter and white out and just it's super messy nice. but it's gonna be fun when it, i think i think it's gonna look really nice like shrunk like right. so yeah that's a that's an exciting process and uh you get that first nerve-wracking uh moment where you're holding the book in your hands and you're flipping <laughs> through it looking for a typo <laughs> and instead you realize you left a bunch of lettering underneath the uh, liner. <laughs> and half toned the whole black and white yeah uh, shit. we don't have to worry about that happening <laughs> no. No, well thanks don't. for talking to us today matt and thanks for taking thanks. the time out of uh out of your schedule really appreciate it and good luck on your book uh house on fire Thank uh, you. really looking forward to to seeing it so get your ass in the drawing board uh yep and uh that's and have a happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and happy birthday to you. Thank you guys. I appreciate Eat some it. cake. You're still young enough that you can do that without feeling terrible. <laughs> yeah, my wife made a cake, so. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. The, the icing is there for, ready for me to taste. So. She just she just came up to to Excellent. drag me down, so. Well, have a great one, Matt, and uh, you, guys, you guys uh thank you for watching and uh we hope to see you all soon. Make sure to like, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell.